This is a series about your home and mine. Why they look the way they do, why they are where they are. Whether it's a terrace in the city, a Queenslander, a homestead in the bush, a weekender by the beach, a federation or a project home, this is its story, our story. It's not the story of monumental buildings. It's the hidden history of our houses, and it tells us who we were and who we are. To learn that story, I'll go to houses that reflect how we live and have lived in many parts of the country. It's a story of how we've built so much more than just a roof over our heads. We've built Australia. When we move out of the city into the bush, the way we've built Australia takes on those characteristics we like to think of as being deeply Australian, with the houses the settlers built, houses we like to call the homestead. The aims of European settlement were modest, but the colony grew and attracted free settlers when men of enterprise proved that there were fortunes to be made. And for so many years, the best hopes for fortune were on the land. And it was on the land that a type of house with real character developed. In its classical form, it would have quite small windows and quite a big veranda. Both features designed to shade the accommodation inside. The hipped roof was perfect for the climate and the use of local materials a solution to the often remote locations. The outbuildings were always an integral part of the workings of the house and of the farm. When it's all put together, it's the homestead. We'll go to Tasmania, across to Western Australia and up north to look at the shape of the home on the farm to find out what a real homestead is and why it looks the way it does. This is Camden Park, southwest of Sydney. It was built by the man who introduced the Merino sheep to Australia. The sheep's back made John MacArthur's fortune, and he had this place built as a sort of homage to the English stately home. But it's a house on a farm, so arguably it's a homestead. But is it? Camden Park has been continuously in the same family, the family that commissioned the colonial architect John Verge to design it since 1831, longer than any other house in the country. 